What's up and good morning guys welcome back to another video I think it's been uh, quite a while here since we've actually filmed at world headquarters and well We've got a few updates since then uh, Derek got the Harley running obviously you guys saw Chris's graphics go on his bike the other day and this thing turned out absolutely killer. We got some K20 updates that I'm gonna wait till Dedic uh, is here and we can do that in a video, but K20's got a super sick shifter setup that's going in it. Maybe we'll see, we'll see if you guys can see it from here, but I don't wanna spoil any surprises. Anyways, um, today we're gonna be taking the old BBB out and it's always a great day when I get to drive this truck, other than the fact that it has been sitting and I just realized I forgot to plug it in to the battery tender. Oh, oh wait, wait, a step came down. There might be hope. There might be hope this thing's gonna start. Or not, the step's not going back up, which tells me the battery's very low. Ugh, and we have quite the drive today. Luckily, I'm a little bit ahead of schedule, which is very rare. But I'm not sure if we have jumper cables here. And my jumper box is up at the ranch, so we're gonna plug this into the battery tender, which is the slowest way of charging anything ever, while we go do a couple of things here before we leave. Let's see if that gives us enough juice. I doubt it. Charge, baby. All five amps of you charge. Also, hopefully the uh, Tahoe starts because we gotta move the Tahoe to get the BBB out. But the good news is, guys, I got pockets full of snacks here. Look at that, woo, woo, we are good to go. All right, y'all, here goes nothing. Let's see if she will start. I'm pretty nervous, not very confident. Oh yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's not gonna happen. Okay, now we gotta find some jumper cables real quick because our being early is about to turn into not so early. Good news is, found cables. Let's see if the Tahoe starts here and hopefully the Tahoe's got enough juice to jumpstart the Denali. Tahoe fired right up. Get the Tahoe flipped around, nose her in, and hopefully this works. Cables are hooked up, let's see if she'll fire now. Oh, she's still looking low. We're gonna need a little more juice. All right, I'm worried the, uh, the whole Tahoe here is not gonna have enough juice. Even with my super sweet uh, throttle control here to keep it revved up, we'll remove that. Looks like we're bringing the single cab around. Now the good thing about the single cab is it's got a high idle switch. There we go, high idle. Let it charge up for a second. All right, let's see if she'll start. Oh, success! We're on our way! You know, what I love most about this truck is I can just let it sit for an absolute ton of time, which you guys clearly see from the channel, it does. And I can then jump in it confidently, even after a jump start, and know that this thing's good for a road trip. So today we're heading up to Renegade Products, which you guys might have seen, uh, Renegade Detail Products, as well as a whole other line of stuff that they make. We're also meeting up with our good friend Lacey Blair, and I think a couple other people. So this was kind of a, a last minute trip. Uh, I honestly don't know what we're gonna be doing today, so let's see what we can get into. And hallelujah, today is a great day. I just looked at my cup holder, here and I found my knife that I have been missing forever I've been searching for this thing well guys we we almost made it we gotta stop for a little uh, bathroom break here and typically I stop at like a Home Depot or Lowe's right. but those bathrooms are never that spectacular so we're gonna go to a friendly face here at the GMC dealership check out their bathroom all right well shout out to uh, Tustin Buick GMC for having great restrooms now we can continue our journey now for all of you it doesn't get that cold in California people see all those snow-capped mountains out there in the distance it gets cold here now I'll be it where we're currently at even though there's snow-capped mountains in the distance is uh, 67 degrees in January. All right, you guys, we have finally made it. The day we were gonna be early, we're an hour late. And I honestly hope we're at the right place, but I'm not 100% sure. We have made it to Maverick Abrasives, which I believe is the parent company to Renegade. And apparently G-Wagons are very common over here. I don't know if we should pull into the gate. Do they leave the gate open for us? Uh, we're backing up, we're backing up. We're not committing to going through the gate. Hey, hey, we'll try again, we'll try again. <laughs> What's up, Lacey? Drove the old... The BBB. I would totally say, hey Lacey, you want to take that for a drive, but I have seen too many wheels of you driving, so. Wait a second, what? wait a second. What? I don't curb wheels, I just. You know what, this actually might be the safest one, because I don't have rubber band tires. That'd be perfect. I don't curb wheels. Other people curb my wheels. I Allegedly. hit mailboxes occasionally, but other than that. <laughs> yeah, give me the tour. tour I mean, going on. Yeah. I feel like. You know, Lacey got the, the full tour a couple times before me, a but times before. I haven't posted it yet though because you know how terrible I am about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So sure. you'll probably I, be first. I, actually, a lot of people uh, don't know we do several things in here, the, the, and people are surprised actually when I say, "Oh, you know the name of the address, the name of the company is Maverick Abrasive." They're like, "Well, I thought it was Renegade," and it's actually uh, Renegade is just one of the trade names that we use for the uh, detailing product. I know it's gonna be a little redundant for you, Lacey, but- Hey, you know me. what? I'm always interested in what you have to say, Ron. <laughs> so I um, started off basically in banking a long, 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 long time ago. Okay. Before the internet. 
All right, that's, <laughs> that was a minute ago. And one of my customers, actually the bank, uh, one of the bank president, one of the bank presidents pulled me aside and said I need to push a line of credit through. This is after the, it was like what they called back the savings on loan debacle back in the early okay. Back in the early 80s. You saw that in my economics book in high school there, Rami? Yeah. So, you know, they put a whole bunch of, like, every time one of the economy melts down, they had a bunch of new, like, banking laws and everything. This is like one of those post-banking laws where, like, if you want to write up a, pro a credit profile for somebody, you need to be written up by an independent credit person, and then it goes up the loan committee bypassing the loan officer. Or gotcha. Bypassing the person who is involved. Yeah, basically, they don't yeah. want the conflict of interest. So that's so kind of like my job was to do that. Okay. Except that, of course, I work for the guy, and he's like, hey, you know, we need to spin this and get it through the loan committee. I'm like, yes, sir, that's my job. So I did that and got it through, and um, the fellow who owned the, the company at the time, okay. what they manufactured was buffing compounds, compounds for polishing metal. Gotcha. And after it went through, and I had made friends with him because I interviewed him, did all the kind of stuff that goes into doing a credit profile, he said, dude, you're wasting your time in banking. Why don't you just... You know, come and work for me. I'm growing, and I need somebody that like got some accounting and finance skill. Blah 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 blah. I'm like, yeah, okay. I was bored in banking. I was just like, I, was just like, I didn't want to do it. I mean, yeah. I thought it was something. I, you know, I originally went to school to be in investment banking in New York uh, or in Chicago in the Mercantile Exchange. Two winters in the cold, and I was like, I'm done. I'm <laughs> don't blame you. I'm done. I'm going back to California. And so, you know, I ended up joining him. Nice. And along with the manufacturing of buffing compounds, you know, have you done any buffing before? Any polish? A little bit. I'm not quite as experienced as Lacey <laughs> here. You know, you Is know, that saying a lot? <laughs> before you buff, yeah. you have to, before you buff, you have to sand. Okay. And along with the buffing compounds, he sold sanding belts, and I took to the sanding belts a lot easier than the buffing compound because the buffing compound I found was just very, very like subjective. You take a bar of compound to like a customer and say, you know, Mr. Customer, would you like trying my compound? And take it they'll like scratch at it and sniff it yeah. and like, oh, it's not going to work. It's like, right. you know, whereas a sanding belt, you can put it on a machine and count the number of golf club heads coming out and it's just a cost per part. And there you go. There's a calculation. Through a fluke of like, the, you know, several divine interventions along the way, <laughs> I left him back in the early 90s, just started buying from somebody like me that makes sanding belts for a living and just, you know, was a, just a dealer, a reseller essentially and building up my customer base and I'm giving you like the real like nickel nickel <laughs> dime tour. But I gotta like preface it so you know kind of why we're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So eventually in the late 90s, I got myself some financing and I bought my first set of fabricating machines. And that's what you see here. So basically from the, most of my career, but it was from the mid 90s, through the next meltdown in banking uh, called the uh, the mortgage meltdown back in 2008 and 9, yep. I manufacture sanding belts for a living. So I buy a big roll of abrasive that you see over there. All right. And I will take it through a process basically of essentially we're kind of almost, we're called a converter. We convert it from one form, a large roll, it kind of looks like that almost. Gotcha. And then we'll end up with a bunch of different sizes, some custom, some standard, and they'll just go on machines for sanding steel, wood, plastic, metal, nice. glass. We saw, actually, over the years, I forgot to tell you, we have sold to some people that actually use the sanding belts to run cloth over it to make flannel. I mean, you just, just all kinds of applications. You would be shocked at the amount of sanding that goes on in this country. Yes. Uh, and that still remains a big part of what we do, um, is the business-to-business -business portal of sanding, supplying uh, aerospace companies, uh, automotive companies, motorcycle companies, glass companies. It wasn't until probably 2015 or so that we embarked upon our first business to consumer portal. And what we did is we said, okay, well, you know, what else can we do with this other than business to business? Because tooling is getting better and stuff is going offshore and things are becoming more automated. And right. so it's like, it's just the dynamics of the industry, they're just changing and tastes are changing. When I first got into the racket, back when Lexus first launched, mm -hmm. if you didn't have a set of chrome wheels on your Lexus, <laughs> you were like, like now, like who really puts a lot of chrome on, right. on, on wheels? I mean, there's the polish, there is some chrome, don't get me wrong, but there's more of it is powder coated and yep. custom finishes and things of that nature. And so tastes have changed also and requirements have changed and tooling has changed. And, we decided back in 2015, what else can we do? And that's when we started our outreach to a very large, robust community that makes custom knives. Okay. People that make anything from small little pocket knives, so samurai swords, to chef's knives, you name it. And that was our first business to consumer outreach. And that's what you see actually over here, this whole sell in there, 
is basically a fulfillment center. We, you know, people order online an assortment of, of grits and sizes and flexibilities and they'll run that through for the making of, of a custom knife. Now, what we ended up doing just recently, last year actually, was applying that same thing to the abrasives portion for, for metal fabricating and wood fabricating. Gotcha. So people now online um, will just click and say, you know, people, we all learned last year, people are increasingly more comfortable just ordering online. I uh, will bring you around all right. um, so you can actually see what the back end of it looks like. Uh, the abrasive rolls are a raw material. Some of it's uh, US made, some of it's European, some of it's South Korean, some of it's Japanese. Uh, we'll bring that in depending on the market. So you will, we'll dimension something, which basically cuts the knives up. Gotcha. Uh, this actually is where we're cutting a cloth roll right now that is going to a company that makes nail files. Nice. So we're cutting it up and they'll take it and they'll lay it out on, on uh, foam pads and they'll build dog cut it. See how the rolls are all just lined up by the knives over here? Oh yeah. That's rad. And there you go. So it's crazy the amount of other industries, like you being kind of the, like the start of the supply chain. Yeah. How many other industries you can feed. I mean, walking in here, I was not expecting nail files. Like, you just don't know. You just, yeah, and, and that's why I like, I, you know, especially when, like, for example, we bring on a, a major partner like Lacey, it was important for me to have her come out here and really see what we do. Because, like, the, the prism that everybody sees in our industry is like, oh, you know, car soap and car wax yeah. and everything like that. But there's just, like, a, a much larger... Uh, footprint that we try to address here. Basically, everything gets like, dimensioned one way and dimensioned another way. Okay. Basically, what we're trying to do here is make a a continuous loop that goes on a machine. What we do here is we, we seam this. Okay. If you look in here, Ryan, that's okay. basically what we do. We're, all we're doing is we're applying uh, the two parts together so that we're seaming it, and and once we put glue it and put it all together and bind it together. If we have done our job right and that belt pops on a machine, it will pop anywhere except that spot. Gotcha. That's, that's how strong that bond is. I like that. Automated machine which basically does all the steps in one, um, we'll call that one. That one back there, I'll show you the Lamborghini. We call this one the Ferrari. Okay. When we first ordered this machine, the OG machines are all blue. But as they advanced, they said, well, what color do you want this machine? I said, well, I'd like a Ferrari red. Nice. I said, Ferrari red? Like, nobody orders red for a machine. Why do you want that? I said, because it costs as much as a freaking Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like it. crazy, like, some of this machine, how much it goes for, you know. But it's all very specialized machinery. This oh. stuff is specific to making sanding belts. Gotcha. You really can't use it for anything else. Gotcha. Feel that. Oof. Stainless steel coil. The grain is called zirconia. It's an industrial version of, of a, like an industrial diamond. It's basically, it's a man-made grain that's used for soup. It takes a lot of pressure and a lot of heat to get that stuff to work, and that's what it's for. These are all lined up. Go back, walking in front of you. Different <laughs> sizes, different grits, different materials. The black stuff is all for glass sanding. You know, that's probably it goes out to somebody who does uh, plate glass for okay. uh, probably automotive or something like that. And that basically is the uh, braces department. Doing a great job. I'm jealous. Well, I guess, yeah, I guess, I, I guess I'm blessed that I got that uh, He got the good footage. So it's like, I'm just going to be like, hey guys, I filmed a tour, but like it was not that good. So if you want to see it, just go to Ryan's channel, I guess. Jeez. Well, there you go. Man. We take plugs anyway. We we'll can get around that. Yeah. <laughs> We're not too proud to take a plug. During the meltdown of 2008, 9, and 10, the big mortgage did meltdown. We acquired two companies. Uh, one manufactures buffing wheels for polishing metal. You need a wheel, much like if you're going to wax your car, you need the wax and you need the bonnet. Right. In industrial polishing, the bonnet version of that is the buffing wheel. And though that starts off basically the same way as the abrasive, it's just a big roll of cloth. And we bring that in, and you can feel this, Ryan, over here. You can feel that. Oh, yeah. It feels like a soft feel, burlap. Yeah, very soft. Yeah, very soft cloth. And then uh, just remember that, because I don't think I've got a, a loose piece over here. Remember that so when I show you when after how we, we starch that, how that ends up feeling, because much like automotive detailing, the, the, those cloths, depending on the stiffness and the starches, they don't impart a different finish. Gotcha. Feel that. That is the same exact cloth. Really? Same exact thing. We just treat it and starch it. We don't treat it. It gets treated by gotcha. a 
a garment house. Yeah. But that ends up, you know, see how that's crazy and aggressive that feels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you add a buffing compound along with that, you can see how that can polish out lines in stainless steel. Right. We'll come back to this junk later in a minute. Um, I just see my bottle on the shelf. I'm like, junk? Okay. So this is the cell where we make all the buffing wheels. So everything starts basically on one end, sewing, and it goes all the way back around. And at the end of the process, you are left with a buffing wheel. Nice. So polishing metal. This is the uh, mostly for the consumer end of things. We also make the larger ones, which I don't see over here. Any for the uh, there's some larger ones there for the industrial stuff that basically because we still do industrial, but the, the consumer for us is is the way to go. I'll explain why that is the case. I, I was watching on uh, Lacey's Instagram the other day uh -huh. that she was you know pretty much involved in this process of making some of those. So Lacey. Go fire up one of those machines. Let's see what you got. Ooh. I think that was on, I just the, uh, on, the, on the on the on the bottling line. She was on the bottling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was on the bottling line. So yeah, so this isn't going right now, but this was so cool. Did you see this? It's uh, like a freaking chocolate factory, basically. Basically, we're <laughs> we're mixing. This is where the compound is mixed. Basically, we're we're mixing very very fine abrasive powders. Okay. With binders, fats really, um, and that's what holds it together at certain. You know, and they melt at certain lower melting points you know I've used like 120 to 140 you know the buffing compound along with the buffing wheel is what ends up giving you that finish gotcha so people ask well how fine is fine um if you look at this stuff here you can open up your hand see how fine that is oh yeah it's like it's like baby, baby powder, powder. Yeah. yeah and believe it or not that along with the binder along with the buffing wheel stiffness or lack of stiffness depending on what you're doing along with the speed the rpm of the wheel pressure all that kind of stuff right we'll impart that finish on aluminum or stainless stone sometimes glass it just depends what you're doing yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all over the place nice. so that's what all this up basically all these mixers are designed to uh, mix one type of product of another it's uh you can see like this is what the one of the final product ends up looking like something like this gotcha this was another uh acquisition that we made so the buffing wheels was one. Okay. This is the other one. You go back to the story I told you about the guy that hired me from the bank mm -hmm. in 1989. In 91, I left him. And in 2008, he calls me up in July and says, I'm retiring. It's like, I'm going to Hawaii. Good timing. Good timing. <laughs> so I said, really? Like, well, what's up? He's like, well, you know, I want to sell my factory. Like, I'm done with this. Like, I'm just like, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm done. He's up in Los Angeles. You interested? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm interested. I'm going to him. So we ended up buying you know, the first set of you know, mixers from him, which is basically this whole line here. Okay. My old employer bought him out, bought those out later from somebody else that decided that they didn't want to do it either. And that's kind of how you know, we got into the, you know, we were just abrasives. Then we got into buffs and compounds. Nice. At, you know, like within like a month of each other. Um, those back mixers, somebody went, was going, again, somebody in our industry, like, you, you know, back when, <laughs> back in 89, where were you in 89 again? Dead, or, uh, you know, not dead, dead. <laughs> <laughs> like not a lot. <laughs> In 89, just in Los Angeles alone, there were eight manufacturers of buffing compound. Okay. Now there's probably like four in the whole country. Hell yeah. To give you an idea, you know, again, how tastes have changed, finishes have changed. Right. A lot of stuff is outsourced, tooling is better, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that guy back there, his daughter had uh, took, taken over his company after he passed away and she moved up to Oregon. She had a bunch of vineyards, said, screw this industrial crap, I'm just gonna make cheese and wine. Wanted to sell the mixers, bought the mixers. Along with the mixers, she gave me the book of business on formulas. One of the customers of that was somebody who was a polisher that catered to the metal finishing industry for the big rigs. Okay. Okay, so you see all these big rigs rolling through. They're nice and shiny, all that kind of stuff. So we continued the relationship with him after we bought the mixers and everything. And he said, hey, you know, you guys should be going to the truck shows. You guys got a great product. So we started taking compound and buffs to the big rig shows. And I was sitting there with a purchasing agent at a truck show, one, a truck shop. And she said, no, 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 you know, like the real turnover is on liquids, like liquid metal polish and spray wax and whatever. I'm like, oh, it's late 2015. Okay. So uh, March of 2016, we decided to launch our own metal, liquid metal polish called Rebel Red. And that was our first foray into the Renegade world. That was our first Renegade, like real liquid like product at that point yeah gotcha. everything had been like either that or that which we do anyway right and then very quickly thereafter we did i think a spray wax and a rubber and vinyl for the tires and a mild degree certain i can't even remember what anyway like a year and a half later we had like 15 products and they were like we didn't make any of this stuff okay gotcha. and, you know and the guy was making it for us i looked at him and i said you know it's time you know so i bought him out 
and he had a factory. I've loved every bit of the story so far, by the way. Yeah, right? I love hey, the buyouts. Like, I love much. the acquisitions and just I changing. That's what I do. Yeah. Yeah. Ironically, I, ironically, all that all that schooling that I went to for, because I wanted to go into investment banking in New York, and I said, forget it, uh, ended up coming back to, to serve me later, you know? Right. And so he had two factories, one in Riverside, which catered to the big rig trade, and one up in Los Angeles, which catered to, catered to automotive. So we closed both those factories and crunched everything in here. And what you see down this line is basically all the, all the blending machines for making everything from glass cleaner to degreasers to tire dressings to hand sanitizer, you just freaking name it. Everything is done all in here, mixed, put in vats, whether they're big, you know, big, uh, you know, eight drum vats or, you know, one drum vats or big totes or whatever. And then we bring them over. This is the OG line in here, which we, uh, which we came with the acquisition. Okay. Um, that's the old bottling line. And that was kind of like, it's like um, slow and a little dysfunctional. Anyway, so we ended up, we ended up getting uh, the Lamborghini. Okay. For bottling, you know, because right. so much cost. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've got like, you know, um, this is the newer bottling line. Basically, the renegade world led us into the business to consumer world. Okay. It became for us now, uh, no longer reliant strictly on business to business, but like business consumer is the way to go. And that really amplified last year. Stores are closed and more of a close and they're at 20% capacity if they are even open, stuff like that. And people are like, click, 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 deliver it to me. So we decided, you know what? We can mix chemicals and we know how to do that. We're just gonna like make some dog soap and some dog cleaner and stuff like that. And that's basically how we launched the Genesis of Pampered Pups came on board last year. We launched at just at Black Friday. We were fortunate enough to put together a great partnership with Lacey, so she's, she's really taken on that as part of the brand management. We'll be adding more products to that as we move on. So today, I mean, I brought the girls out for the week for a combination of yeah. the girls, girls, the girls, girls came out, out for the week. <sighs> we're team building, um, we discussed the show season, what we were planning on doing, launching also, again, another business consumer portal, gun care, gun nice. cleaning, okay? There are a lot of guns in this country and somebody's got to keep them clean and if they're going to keep them clean they should be using my product that's basically how i feel about it and perfect you know i'm a marketer keep and along dogs, with my clean the yeah, cars, clean the guns, the clean. yeah and that's my demographic you know I, you know you know it it's a diesel driving gun toting dog owning or dog loving tattoo wearing guy or girl oh my gosh why did i forget about this oh. Oh, can we get some tattoo balm on these? Absolutely. These are looking a little ashy, like I'm not even lying. We've got two lines, the OG Renegade, which is the red bottle, as probably a lot of people know. And we've got the Detailer Series, which you see up there, which is basically designed to address the, the professional detailer. People that don't really buy in a bottle, they buy in a, a gallon or a five gallon or sometimes even more. Right. We sell the car washes, started the marine line for the automotive, for the, uh, for, you know, boats and yachts and, and pontoons and things of that nature. You know, one of the things I like to do on my channel, um, I don't know how much you've watched of it, but hopefully more than- Hopefully you've done your research. Hopefully, yes, hopefully a couple videos or two, uh, is I like to tell people stories. Cause one of the th big things around us is like, we like to promote the way people came into business and small business. And I mean, obviously this is much larger than most small businesses we deal with, but you're still a small business at the end of the day. Yeah. We and are, yeah. seeing that, I mean, you as the sole owner and hearing the whole story of how you've come to be and the acquisitions and how you changed your product lines and while still keeping the old product lines because at some point something's got to pay the yeah, bills while you're no, shifting. But yeah, we're, we're adapting. We keep growing. We keep shifting. We keep pivoting at whatever the you know buzzword you want to use. But that's the name of the game. Even as like as recently as when COVID started up um, in, in like March of last year, one of the primary ingredients we use for car care products is alcohol. We're like, oh, we can just mix some sanitizer. Right. And actually, we still do to this day. Like, there's some hand sanitizer and some alcohol spray. Now, obviously, that's died down. You don't have that innovation as quickly if things are coming overseas as you do of somebody that's in the market. I mean, you're clearly here dealing with sure. the best of the best. Mm -hmm. um, to have that innovation to be that quick. So the supply chain is something that a lot of people don't have the ability to do. But when you can do everything in house like you do and keeping it American made and owning a chemical company in California, oh, yeah. which yeah. I can already very, tell you is not going to be fun. Yeah. No, dude, I wish I could move this, but I was saying, trying to get him to move to Texas. Yeah. You should it. come too. Just, <laughs> like everyone should just come. And we'll be doing more stuff. So the skincare stuff, um, we'll be, you know, we formally are launching next month. Nice. That's going to be a, a, a like a fun. It's like a completely different. It's not even a part of Renegade. It's you know, it's part of the company, obviously, but it's a completely different portal, completely different mindset. But still able to capitalize upon the partnerships that we have with our, our, our existing friends out there in the community. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this over to the star of... Uh, <laughs> uh, 
So one of the things we like to do as, as with our partners, uh, Lacey is a hardworking lady, and that's one of the things. Oh. Like, dude, we're like I have been after Lacey for like two years. She can probably tell you the story. Probably like, more than two. At ish. least two years. Yeah. <laughs> like, and it's like you know because I saw something in her. It's like you know, and she's grown and she's matured in the marketplace, and her brand has just blown up. We want to co-brand and make something that is unique to Lacey Blair, but still allows us to enjoy the partnership and everything we do together been white mean, as you can see like how how much detail we put into this thing um and we're all about aesthetics we love oh, absolutely aesthetics. no it looks you know, super rad even she looks familiar with her red hair or black hair reddish black hair no. Looks purple. I don't know that, that looks like girl. A purple. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that girl. Purple face. That was last week, Lacey. <laughs> but you know, this is basically something we're very proud of this because it allows us to really. I mean, I, I don't want to like get all mushy. It's almost like, hey, here's our promise ring type of thing, and it's like, yeah, hey, you know, this is. We're not gonna go there with Lacey anymore. Oh God. <laughs> well, uh, like, no. know, yeah, like, uh, about that one. Part of, part of our commitment to partnership <laughs> is to make sure yeah. that both sides. Oops, both sides. Stuff that's both, happened. That's how we feel about Lacey. <laughs> <laughs> Just throw it. I'm gonna be honest. Now I know one of us is clearly better looking than the other here, but <laughs> I'm a little jealous. My face has never been put on a bottle of anything. Hey, that's the rad. Here is young. Though. This is like smell it. <laughs> that is identical gummy bears. Like that is. Yes. So I designed it. Literally, they sent me different samples, and I'm like, you know, different ideas. I'm like, I want something that smells like gummy bears or gummy worms, because people randomly send me those in the mail because they. Because that's like 90 percent of your diet. Yeah, I know. It's like Red Bull. You can't make one that smells like Red Bull. That's probably like copyrighted, right? And you guys know, like air fresheners are not my thing. Really? Oh yeah. Very few to me are like, I get headaches from certain smells. Oh no shoot. Well, we're going to just put the lid on this. That we smells great. We're good. It. We don't want to chance it. Ryan approved. Headache okay. approved. You guys get headache from smells. We need Ryan's gummy bears one now. <laughs> Dude, look at even the box and everything. Yeah, cool. Yeah. We will bring here. You you can just, yeah, you're going to take, take some home. Awesome. Awesome. I mean, you guys have ever wanted to buy a post or Lacey instead. Just buy this, you get both. Yeah. You get an it's awesome air freshener. Point. And it's even got my signature on it. Look at that. Charge extra for that. Just send that to my PayPal. Lacey's our new tour guide. What's up, guys? I want to introduce you to my YouTube friends. Hello, everybody. Hello. Oh, thank God. I'm not the only guy getting involved in the, <laughs> the new truck girls, apparently. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Chloe. Hi. How are you? Hi, I'm Chloe. Nice, nice to meet you. you. Okay, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Catherine. Nice to meet you. Sophie, nice to meet you. Tyler, Ryan, nice to meet you. You know, I'm the, the least hot of the truck girls here. And so I haven't gotten the, the greatest time. So I ran into Garrett's office here and he's like super stoked. Apparently you've been watching the channel I for- I a writer though is the thing. Listen, you're my favorite. Sorry, Rami, he's my favorite person here for right now. <laughs> that's awesome. Give me a minute, this dog will love me. So this is the um, part of the skin. This is where it started basically. The skincare started with tattoo and i wanted a tattoo bomb that wasn't greasy wasn't oily that you can put on lighten basically make it look like a refresh but i wanted it to look like like feel, feel that. that and then when you open it up it basically it's like a little like, you can put it whether it's on your vanity on your nightstand right. in your gym bag well we're planning on selling these as the refills online as well so that you know buy that and you know it becomes I mean, you see people like have old Zippo lighters, that kind of stuff. It's mm -hmm. like that kind of thing where you like, you know, it's like it's you, you end up over time, hopefully having a patina on it that's unique. <laughs> right, 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 right. You know? I feel like if Lacey carries it, it needs to be indestructible. This feels indestructible. Yeah. Yeah. That, that or if Zach pisses her off. That's <laughs> just, I, I immediately star. went to sell yeah, it. Like, yeah, exactly. You, can. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you guys can't see what's in my hand to the left here because apparently that's that's shunned on the YouTube world. but. Lacey's gonna pull my truck up. God help my wheels. And we're going to uh, do some detailing for Instagram. Hopefully TikTok. I'm very nervous right now. Don't mind how dirty it is and how many water bottles are in there. Every single one of my trucks is like a thousand times worse. Like All this right. is probably gonna be pristine in here. <laughs> and it is. Feel free to adjust the seat in any way you need. Oh, like I already jacked it completely like beyond return probably, but it doesn't go up anymore. Oh, it's a tight squeeze. I'm nervous. Now, mind you, Lacey has driven much bigger things. Her Escalade was a little bit bigger than my truck. Like, if I was the purple wheel, that would be the end of a friendship. Like, you'd be legitimately really, really mad. 
Yeah. See, the good thing about it is if you curve a wheel, I could fix it. It's going in your suitcase and you're taking it back that to fix it. Yeah. I could fix it. Yeah. Okay. Well, so I think it would be alright. I think you're yeah. the best person to ever curve a wheel. That's true. That's true. Okay. Now let's not make that happen, but so we just got done washing my truck with AR foam cannon. Apparently, we can't show that on YouTube, so. Go to my Instagram or my TikTok, thanks to my awesome TikTok videographer slash editor here. <laughs> I've been looking for a full-time TikTok editor, so apparently I'm not, I'm not young enough to figure right. that stuff out. Being that I'm here with all the truck girls, am I a diesel hottie now? Yes. Like, am I in? Am I in on the diesel hotties? Yeah, you sure are. All right, y'all, well, I've got a bunch of my uh, Renegade products here, as well as the skincare line, as well as their new gun cleaning line. Gotta give a huge thank you to Rami, the owner of Renegade, as well as Lacey, for having me out here today. Super, super stoked. Make sure you guys check out Renegade and all of their detailing supplies. And also a huge thank you to them for letting me play with that AR foam cannon that we have all been seeing all over the Instagram world. Oh, geez, Lacey, you drive, good Lord. You're like eating the steering wheel. Hopefully my presets are saved. All right. We're good. I also hope you guys enjoyed hearing Rami's story. Um, I know walking through warehouse, it's not like the most exciting videos, but you guys know I love to convey stories of how people made it in business and in industry. And, and just hanging out with Rami for a little bit today, I have been definitely inspired. That's for sure. The man is a wealth of knowledge and clearly from the amount of businesses he owns and how successful he is, he puts that knowledge to good use. Well, y'all, I totally, totally forgot to end this video. Um, I gotta give a huge thank you to Renegade. Um, we just finished up an awesome dinner. So again, thank you to them. But with that, we're gonna wrap up. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have not subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button now that you're not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like, a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workforwardapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, Remy's a good example. You gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best. I'm out. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah.